What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. Now, without question, Australia has produced some of the best golfers we've ever seen. Greg Norman, Adam Scott, Jason Day, Cameron Smith winning the 150th Open Championship two weeks ago. But were you aware at one point in time they were designing and manufacturing some of the best blades golf has ever seen? Because to tell you the truth, I didn't and I went and picked up a set of them for not that much money and didn't even realize what I had in my hands. So last night I was traveling down to Southampton anyway to pick up another job lot of golf clubs and I saw this listing just being posted saying golf clubs and bag, a junior golf bag and then just some irons in the top of them. I asked the seller, do you know what manufacturer or model these irons were? And they said, no, they're actually at someone else's house. They can get that information and hold them for me. And I said, don't worry, I will pay the price and just take a bit of a punt on them. First shot of the day, we are 100% taking that i'm not quite sure if i hit that out the toe considering the ball is the size of the head itself but incredibly solid like there was very little movement at all from the club face and we actually got half a decent shot but the flight on it with a modern day pro v1 so low and i'm incredibly excited to get some numbers up later and this is what i was welcomed with not knowing even in person how rare, expensive, or historic these irons were. Blade gets thrown about a lot in our game. And I've never seen an iron where the head is smaller than the hosel itself. This thing is a knife. I dare say there was another iron out there all being produced that was thinner than this. And you'll be shocked to know how much I paid for this full set. Two to pitching wedge, 50 pounds and let's be honest that's understandable even with someone that has a good knowledge of old golf clubs a good knowledge of second-hand equipment even I didn't think these would be worth that much money 50 pounds 60 pounds 70 pounds I mean they're a good looking blade in good condition with good grips good shafts so they serve a purpose and they're definitely not easy to hit so you probably put them under the category training aid. No wonder Sevy was able to hit bunker shots with his three iron. Look how easy it is. I mean, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> now through my research, I actually discovered who designed and manufactured these irons. And that was Dunlop, which is not what you would expect from a premium soft forged iron blade especially in the year 2022 and and again as i was doing my digging what i didn't realize is dunlop at one point owned slashinger john letters and this other very well-known golf brand max fly it's incredibly interesting how golf companies go from one end to another in terms of the spectrum as all three of those brands in the 21st century you would deem as a beginner package set slashinger v300 john letters x y and z but at one point in time the same definitely couldn't be said for the set that i have here fascinating data i've just got from the gc3 from my seven iron and two iron swing there and it makes so much sense especially as technology has evolved over the years bigger heads helping that launch angle and then all the de-lofting to offset that so you're not just getting these high balloony shots you're getting catapulting distances for the average golfer and average club head speed but no wonder i've gravitated towards these irons today no launch angle these things are a spoon a knife and when struck out in the middle feel as good and forgiving as all the others off center shots however your hands disintegrate into a pile of dust needless to say physics doesn't lie and the launch angle and spin rates i was producing with a seven iron is pretty much perfect if you watch the club fit that i had at sub 70 i mean my launch angle don't get me wrong is quite low but for someone that always hits up on the golf ball for some reason today i'm hitting down on everything and even though these irons are traditional loss i.e the 7 iron is 36 degrees i launch it lower with the appropriate spin compared to something like this that would be cranked down to 30 degrees but because the head is so much bigger it just promotes that launch 
The two iron data is fascinating. If I didn't tell you I was using a two iron, you would presume I'm hitting a driver. 10 degrees launch angle, 11 degrees launch angle, in rate around the 2000 to 2200 mark. This thing was carrying 240 yards when I finally got a hold of it. It took four shots to actually hit one down the middle. So these aren't forgiving. These aren't gonna be for 99% of golfers. However, if you're an incredibly good golfer, fast club head speed player, and you're on the coast, i.e. it's incredibly windy, these things are like nothing else out on the market. We've gone away from the controlled shot shaping, low spinning, low launching. At some points off the deck, I even carried the eighth green out the back with a 20 mile hour into wind breeze. You can see why I was somewhat underwhelmed when I first set my eyes on these golf clubs. The Maxfly DP30 Dunlop Performance 30 Australian Blade. And now I've been out for nine holes with them, I look at them in a completely different light. And the older Max Flight irons, I know, especially like the A12s, a beautiful hit out the middle, and I thought, you know what, 50, 60 pounds jobs are good, and lo and behold, I find out that these are actually incredibly rare. The second to last release of the Max Fly forged irons. The only more up-to-date version that came out for Maxfly in terms of forged iron was the TM92 Tadmore release where he did a collaboration with Dunlop Maxfly to bring out those irons and this was the predecessor to those and you can see how little there is behind the ball. Now there is very little data, there's very little sales, there's very little anything about these irons. I was astonished to see the kind of prices people were demanding for these irons. 200, 300, 400 pounds for a good condition set. These are forged through and through an incredibly soft metal, meaning that the time and rarity of these clubs, very rarely do you find a set in good condition. And these are in very good condition. Your typical nicks and scratches here, there and everywhere, but plenty of life left in them. And the prices that I've seen on eBay are definitely reflecting the lack of supply. Therefore, I bought a 15 pound iron set off Facebook, not even myself knowing what I got, and potentially now have a three to 400 pound set of irons or do I? Because let's be honest, someone has to buy them. And do I recommend any of you going and buying this set for three, four hundred pounds? No. However, the reason that I am making this video is if you are at a car boot, if you are in a charity shop, if you see an old set of golf clubs off Facebook for 20, 30 pounds, with the Maxfly logo on the back of them, and actually the Australian blade underwriting, I highly recommend you going and picking that set up. These are like nothing I've hit ever before. And that's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but anything different in this game is well worth investigating. Guys, I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, you might like this one up here on the right-hand side. Catch you guys later.